early on in the uh, 1820s and 1830s, there were attempts made to reapportion the legislature back then because people felt it wasn't fair and it was not sufficiently based upon population. Um, nothing ever happened, however, until uh, the early 1960s, 140 years later, when the some court decisions were made that said, yeah, that isn't fair. Uh, there isn't equal voting uh, access in Vermont because of the one representative per town structure of the house in particular. And what you had, and maybe the, the most uh, stark way to illustrate that is that the town of Stratton had 38 people and one member of the Vermont House. And Burlington had over 35,000 people and had one member of the House. After that litigation, uh, the dust cleared in the early to mid 1960s, the legislature reapportioned itself and established the apportionment board to uh, come into being and uh, start working uh, every 10 years, uh, about 18 months prior to when the legislature had to do its own final version of a new map. Uh, so the apportionment board has met uh, oh, me, about five or six times now every 10 years. And we are uh, in a sense advisory to the legislature, uh, but we take that that role very seriously and are, will be trying to provide the legislature with as much data and research and uh, redistricting options as we can. But we have to redraw the lines uh, every 10 years, almost no matter what happens to the state population because the state's population tends to shift within the state. Um, and if you've been following the internal population shift trends, um, those have been steady for 20, 30, 40 years. Uh, now we have another 10 years worth of that trend. And it shows that um, the population in the Southern part of the state and maybe uh, Southwest Central Bennington, Wyndham, and Rutland counties um, is continuing to gradually lose population. And the Northwest corner, uh, Franklin, Lamoille, and Chittenden pr predominantly are gaining population. And uh, when you have, I mean, in an ideal world, you would want each house and each Senate district to have the same number of people as each other ones, which means the, the, there's equality of representation. The law has said that, the courts have said that that doesn't have to be mathematically exactly equal, but it has to be substantially equal. And you have to make a sincere effort to make it as substantially equal as you can. Uh, at the same time, the, the Vermont law in this area says uh, you should also try to have the legislative districts follow town boundaries and county boundaries. And you should uh, do your very best not to subdivide towns and put them in different districts. Uh, those are, uh, end up being competing uh, or colliding uh, mandates uh, and uh, it would be one thing if you said, well, we have 650,000 people in the state. We have 150 house members. We'll just draw, use a computer program of sorts to create 150 house districts that are almost identical in population. And, and people have actually, we've done that as an exercise, but it, may, it bears no very little resemblance to a, a state of Vermont map showing the towns. Uh, and there's a, there's a belief in Vermont that um, 
keeping the towns distinct within legislative districts is a good thing because it gives a legislative district some cohesion and the people in that legislative district share things in common, not just who their legislative representative is. They may share a school district, they may share uh, other relationships, commercial relationships, and may, maybe in the old days, they all went to the same market. Um, but in, and in many cases, they're also, they've been in the same house district for a long time and they're comfortable and accustomed to being joined with one or two other towns in that district uh, and they identify that way. Uh, so those are, uh, Lauren Glenn, some competing uh, uh, mandates we have, this, but, but, but the one that, that, that trumps, that comes out on top under the law is the substantial equality of population. Uh, because if you, in the, in the Stratton Burlington case from 1964, uh, in a sense, in an important sense, the people of Stratton compared to the people of Burlington, the Stratton folks were way overrepresented. They had one house member for 38 people. And in Burlington, the, re the residents were grossly underrepresented. Uh, and that's what we have to keep reminding ourselves. We have, to, we have to avoid something that stark. It's very unusual to have uh, Senate districts with even three people serving at large. Vermont is the only one that has currently has a six member at large district. Uh, uh, and uh, something can be said in favor of smaller districts as promoting better communication between the elected representative and the people being represented. Um, and fundamentally, um, the, the, the the problems that were encountered with a six member at large district were um, instead of representing 21 or 22,000 people, you were representing 140,000 people. Um, and uh, it also made, camp made campaigning for many people very expensive and very difficult. Uh, it, gave, it gave great uh, uh, weight or power to name recognition or to incumbents um, for that same reason. And um, it, it slowly but surely over the last 10 or 12 years, I think even the, the incumbent senators in the Chittenden Senate District came around to thinking, oh, this is really too much. And in 2019, the legislature agreed and amended the law to say that you can't have a Senate district with more than three members at large. So in doing this redistricting work uh, this time around, we are looking at at least reducing that to two, three member districts, but we are also looking at other subdivision uh, options, you know, all the way from six one member districts to three twos or some other combination. One of the problems we've encountered is that the US Census Bureau was under federal law was supposed to deliver us and the other states a final census numbers by March 31 uh, this spring. We still don't have that. And now we've been, we've been told August 15th is going to be when we get the final numbers, but we do have, uh, some reasonable population estimates that are 2019 estimates. And we have been using those just to get our, our feet underneath us and to look at the districts that are likely to have uh, need the most attention. And um, briefly, the methodology that the, the board uses is to uh, establish what the ideal sized district is. And we'll talk about, we can talk about the house ideal now, which is around 4,200 people. We then look at the actual, in this case so far, the estimated population, and we drop 
all those numbers together into a map of the Vermont House districts. And that tells us for each district, a percentage greater or less than the ideal for the population of that House district. Um, and what the law says is that you should look at the House district with the, the highest positive deviation over their ideal number and compare it to the district with the greatest negative deviation from the ideal. Um, and then you look at the spread between those two districts and that's what's called the overall uh, deviation for the entire map. And the, the law says that number should be reasonably tight. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the courts have never, they, the courts have been careful to not micromanage this process because it, at some fundamental level, it has a political tinge to it and the courts uh, rightly uh, try to stay out of the political arena. But um, uh, something approaching the high teens for an overall deviation, for example, where you had a house district with a minus eight and a half or nine deviation, meaning that they have eight and a half percent fewer people in the, than the ideal. Um, and a house district with an eight and a half or nine percent on the high end, creating a deviation of maybe 18 points, that's sort of pushing, pushing it. Uh, it's worth noting that the, the map that the legislature approved in 2012, the house overall deviation is 18.9 percent. So we have, but no one challenged that in court. And so it became the law and that's what we have now. But using the estimated census data, we've identified um, house and Senate districts that look like their percentage deviations are such that they need, are going to need some adjustment. We will be issuing a, a, a an initial house map, sort of a preliminary house map and sending it out to all the towns, publishing it uh, on, our, on our website and all of that. Um, and a town that uh, disagrees with how it's been placed in a district, particularly a town that we propose to subdivide or to put into a two member district, those towns have the right to hold a public hearing, uh, take testimony, and then send us a counter proposal or criticisms of our initial mapping proposal. Um, all those comments will, are, will be coming back to us from the, the boards of civil authority in each town and the board of civil authority uh, in each town is the select board members and the justices of the peace plus the town clerk. And that unit of government is chosen in large part because in towns, um, it's the board of civil authority that has um, a sort of oversight authority over local elections. Uh, and they have some local expertise in that regard. We, we've asked uh, the public, um, do you have a preference in general over a single member house district versus a two member house district? Um, and do you feel strongly um, about the importance of following town lines and keeping towns intact? Um, do you prefer single member Senate districts? Should we go to all single member Senate districts, for example? And the, the apportionment board did a, a version of that 10 years ago uh, just to see what it would look like. And it doesn't look at all like a county map, no, no surprise. Uh, interestingly in Vermont, while we have this statute that um, talks about trying to preserve county lines, um, our county government in Vermont, our counties don't have much governance value or meaning in Vermont. 
uh, but nevertheless, people identify with the county they're in. Um, and when will you file your proposal with the legislature? Well, the, we were so, under our, our statute, we're supposed to get all of this stuff done by the end of July. Um, but the, since the US Census Bureau has failed to send us the data that we need, the legislature enacted some changes that pushed this out into the late summer and into the fall. So if I had to make a, uh, a estimate of when we would be getting this map out to the towns, I would say sometime in the middle to the end of September. Well, let's be in touch when those maps are um, drawn so that we can generate some more interest. And in the meantime, I really appreciate your time and the work of the apportionment board, the legislative apportionment board in making sure that we get the kind of representation that we deserve in the state of Vermont. You got it. My pleasure. See Thank you soon. Thank you, Tom Little. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.